space startup Vast wants to create a research platform, a research laboratory in its Haven One space station that it plans to launch 2025-ish. But they have competition, and I think that's a great thing. I'm the executive director of space consulting firm Astrolytical. I am a scientist by training and once upon a time it used to be my job to facilitate research on the International Space Station. So when I think about a post ISS future, I think about the fact that we are going to need to replace not just habitation modules in space in low earth orbit, but also the research components and the research components that people are willing to pay for, people being government entities and private individuals. Today's announcement by Vast brought in two companies that are very familiar with ISS Space Search, that is Redwire Space and Yuri. You might also know Redwire under the name Made in Space, that's a subsidiary that they bought a few years back. Vast said that they are not only partnering with these two entities, they are going to provide 10 mid-deck lockers, that's a standard size, going back to, I don't know, space shuttle days or earlier. It's about the size of our microwave. They talk about the things that they are going to provide for the users of their research platforms, 100 kilowatts of continuous power, access to ethernet data connection and the experiments can be controlled the payloads can be controlled either by astronauts on haven one or by people on the ground ground controllers very similar to how ISS operates today. Some research is completely automated and some of it needs astronauts, humans in the loop. And there's a return capability for those research payloads that need to be evaluated or, or would be useful to be evaluated back on the ground after the fact. They will return or it's envisioned that they will return on a SpaceX Dragon capsule. Again, very similar to how ISS operates today. I'm not gonna dig down too much into the details here, but Redwire is going to provide two of its facilities. The Advanced Space Experiment Process Processor 4, which is a fully automated multi-use single mid-deck locker processing facility to conduct a variety of life and physical sciences research and small batch biotechnology production in microgravity. And then they're also doing their pill box. Pill in this case stands for pharmaceutical in-space laboratory. It's a Biocrystal optimization experiment is the box part. And both of those facilities, they have been on ISS. And then Yuri, which you might not have heard of if you're an American, um, that is a European company. Again, they are also operational on the ISS and they are providing what they call the Science Taxi. Science Taxi is a groundbreaking life sciences incubator facility that will enable a wide range of experiments to be conducted in the Haven One laboratory. And they go on to talk about how there's a centrifuge for different gravity conditions, which is super important if you're thinking about artificial gravity in space. And there's also room for 38 little experiment shells. What we're seeing here is vast partnering with companies that already have the kind of experience and hardware that is going to be needed for the users of Vast Haven One. In addition, Redwire and Yuri are both knowing that they need to plan for a future with these commercial space stations, these commercial LEO destinations. And so they are starting to partner, like make actual public contracts with some of these space station providers. And this is super important, not only to a scientist like me, but also I have a whole video, which I will link here about the International Space Station ISS National Laboratory and what is to be done with that concept, the National Laboratory in Space concept after ISS retires. There are a lot of people who are providers, users, and facilitators of microgravity research who want to understand what the environment is going to look like after the ISS is retired or as it's in the process of being retired. Because Haven 1, is expected to launch no earlier than August of 2025 on a Falcon 9, which might tell you something. It might tell you that it's small. And I do want to talk about the size of Haven 1. I only know their external dimensions. I don't know what is pressurized. I couldn't find that information. But the external dimensions of Haven 1 are a length of 10.1 meters or roughly 33 feet and a width, which I assume is the diameter, is 3.8 meters or 12 feet. And it is expected to hold up to four people as a crew on board. So if you can imagine, it's kind of tight in there when you're thinking about all of that research that needs to be done and all of the crew that are going to live there. I don't know, they haven't publicly said how long a crew is going to live on board Haven One. There was a quote and in fairness, this is not a vast quote. This is a quote by Yuri co-founder and executive Maria Billum. And this is a, I, I will link the article. The quote is in down below. It's a space news article. And she said, ISS space is limited, which is absolutely true. ISS space is limited because it's been up there for over 20 years. ISS is limited in space because it has all of this amazing equipment that has piled up over time. You know, some of it probably is old and outdated, but most of it is still very much in demand. Again, speaking from personal experience, as one of the 
people who was speaking with researchers and users of ISS National Laboratory, they wanted to know what equipment was up there and what equipment they could use. And a lot of it is heavily in demand. But that, that quote, that little quote, got me thinking, what is the size comparison of Haven 1 compared to some of the modules on ISS? Well, the ISS, of course, was built over decades, and they have separate habitation modules and separate modules for other things, such as separate modules for scientific laboratories. Just to give you some comparisons, the ISS Destiny module, which was the first U.S. laboratory module on the ISS, it has a length of 4.8 meters, or roughly 28 feet, and a diameter of 4.2 meters, or 14 feet. So it's fairly sizable. The ISS Columbus, which is a European Space Agency module, that has an external diameter of roughly four and a half meters or a little less than 15 feet and an overall length of almost seven meters or about 22 and a half feet. And the ISS Japanese Experiment Module GEM, also known as Kibo, that's the largest, that has a pressurized module, so not external anymore, like the pressurized part of it is over 11 meters or almost 37 feet and a diameter of 4.4 meters or about 14 and a half feet. So the ISS modules by themselves that are dedicated to science are roughly the size of or larger than the entire Haven 1 vehicle. If VAST can do the research that its users want done while maintaining its small size, that can be launched on a Falcon 9. Like, that's actually pretty good. There were some quotes in the VAST press release that just gave me pause. And maybe it's just because it's standard practice of companies to ignore the fact that there are other companies doing the exact same thing and to pretend you're not only the first, but the only. But there were some choice things that were said that just implied that VAST was going to be the only option after ISS for doing research, which is absolutely not true. Every commercial space station CLD provider is intending to do research in space. Axiom Space, which will attach modules to the ISS, and then release those modules to become a free-flying space station after ISS retires and deorbits. They have the least amount of information published about what they plan to do research-wise, but they do have a separate module called the Axiom's Research and Manufacturing Facility. Orbital Reef, which is that partnership between Blue Origin, Sierra Space, and a few others, they have a little bit more information. They call Orbital Reef a mixed business and research park. There is a whole research module that is being planned to be developed by Boeing. And they talk about that research module being roughly the same size as their core module. And their core module has 250 square meters of habitable volume. And they talk about how they will have internal and external payloads serving as a multidisciplinary laboratory. There's actually a lot of details about what Orbital Reef is planning to do for research, like the power that it's planning to provide, internet, etc., in a published paper, which I will link below. And then Starlab, which is another small space station, but they are planning two modules. One of them is a module for habitation and laboratories having docking ports with an estimated diameter of about eight meters and estimated width length of about eight meters as well. But they do say that they will support 100% of the payload capacity of the ISS with capacity to conduct more than 400 experiments per year. And I know in the past, Jeffrey Mamber of Voyager Space has talked about the fact that they really want to do a lot of science on Starlab. Specifically, I think he's talked about agriculture. In VAST's press release, they talk about transitioning from a science laboratory in space that's run by governments to a commercial company laboratory where there are less restrictions and more open to working with commercial providers, which is all absolutely true. There were significant restrictions when I was working on ISS National Lab about what can be flown and what's allowed to be done on ISS. And there was a lot of pushback several years ago to the point where NASA started charging commercial companies for time in space, power in space, for a lot of different parameters. And not only that, there are additional restrictions about what's just not allowed to be flown in space on ISS. But what's interesting to me is that VAST's entire announcement is is talking about the same bringing the same facilities that are on ISS or have been flown on ISS to Haven 1 which tells me that they're not clearly planning to do a whole lot different from what's already being done on ISS. So Max Hoyt, the CEO of VAST, he said in the press release, quote, the fact that we are fully commercial with a lot less restrictions and processes than the ISS means you might do new things that you can't do on the ISS. But I'm just not seeing at this point how they're talking about how they're using the same exact equipment that is that has been flown on the ISS and doing things differently. Or maybe they're wanting to put that out there to potential users because there are no 
actual users in this announcement. This is all a request for users, a request for customers. And that is something that every commercial space station has been trying to do for the past several years now, is actually get users for its space station and not just government users, but commercial users. And so this press release today tells me it's more like a we are open for business kind of press release. We don't know which of these companies, which of these space stations are going to be profitable, are going to be successful. And every one of them wants to promote science and have scientific users and research done on their space stations. I am also hoping with the announcement Vast made today that they will encourage these other commercial space stations to announce more details about what they're doing in terms of research on their platforms. And by announcing this, by putting it out there that this is a possibility, it gets rid of the stigma that space is only for rich tourists, which I can't blame them. Like I, if I was a rich tourist, I would fly myself to a commercial space station. <laughs> so, so like no shade there, but if we want to get rid of that stigma that space is just a playground for the wealthy, then we need to emphasize the fact that there are legitimate scientific and research uses for space. And not only that, with Axiom Space's module's very name, the research and manufacturing facility, even though we know nothing else about this publicly, we know that they are moving in the direction of manufacturing, which I'd assume all the commercial space stations are interested in manufacturing, because this is something that has been worked on by some international space station partners for years, for maybe even decades now. And it could be a legitimate business case for a company to not only do basic R&D, but to actually manufacture in space for earth market or for space market. So I applaud VAST for putting this out there. And if you are interested in research in microgravity, check out this video next.